Hi, I'm Allison the Crocheter. And I'm Vivian the Knitter, and you're listening to Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. Hello, and welcome to episode 29 of Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. This is a knitting and crocheting podcast hosted by me and my mom, Vivian. I'm recording from my home here in Edinburgh. And I'm recording from my home here in New Hampshire. You know, I was on the phone today at work, and the woman said Edinburgh. <laughs> which is a new a new mispronunciation that I've never heard before. But uh, anyway. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> on that note. <laughs> Hope you are all doing well. And, and thanks for joining us. Yeah. And we have uh, a special thank you for somebody who sent in a message on, or just a contact form on our WordPress, Steffi from Newcastle, who's a crocheter. So thanks for actually navigating your way to our website and using that contact form. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, it is hot here. Is it hot over there? Um, warm for Edinburgh. Nice. In the sun. Yeah. You know how's you know there's temperature and it feels like feels like 104 degrees. No, it doesn't. There. Mm-hmm. In Earlier. Hampshire. Yes. Oh my God. No, <laughs> but I do because I went to Rome this past weekend. But I noticed I had um, a crisscross tan line on my back, and that was from an evening in Edinburgh. So even after a day of tanning in Rome. I still had an Edinburgh tan line peeking through my Rome tan line. So so it's not that bad in Edinburgh. (laughs) Uh, Okay. (laughs) So our BuzzFeed quiz. You picked a funny BuzzFeed quiz this time around. Yeah, I've I've had it in the, in the, the, the wings for a while now. It's just, what kind of cookie are you? (laughs) I like the, the, the subtitle. It says, don't worry, you're guaranteed to be delicious. <laughs> dough spelled like, you know, cookie dough. Uh, I didn't even notice that. What'd you get? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I just thought just now. I got a ginger cookie. Pure sass, baby. You're not putting up with anybody else's bolt or following anyone else's lead. You always know what's hip because it's whatever you're doing. Uh, and there's a recipe for chewy ginger cookies. <laughs> I got Snickerdoodle. You get along with everyone, and everyone wants to get along with you because you're as cute as a button. If there's a sweet-ass party happening this weekend, you're the one throwing it, which isn't to say you don't know how to correctly conduct a solo booze and Netflix binge night. I think the the, the bottom part is probably better for me, the (laughs) binging and the, yeah. And there is a fat, fluffy sticker doodles recipe in the link. Mm. I do like both of those cookies. There's not a lot of cookies I don't like, though. So there is that. Mm. I wonder, are snicker doodles, do they have snicker doodles here? I feel like that sounds snicker like a very are American basically thing. sugar sugar cookie with cinnamon sugar on top. Rolled in cinnamon sugar on top, yes. Yeah, but I just feel like that sounds very American. Yeah, Wikipedia says America and Germany. Oh. Right, which. Uh. I suppose makes sense with the name, but anyway, <laughs> uh, I thought the question, like the questions were really random, but how many tabs do you have open? I checked, I picked the last option, which was just kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I always have so many tabs open on like multiple windows uh, and multiple desktops. Cause on the Mac you can like, if you, you can swipe and have like multiple like desktops basically. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I, I only had six. I think the first time I took the quiz when we first found this, I had a lot more. Mm. But <laughs> I want to know how you want to be frosted. How do I want to be frosted? I picked the drizzly one. It's like a white drizzled. Oh, the white glaze. Like icing, sort of. Uh huh. I picked the, the chocolate piped frosting. Mm. See, because I mean, you know, I have a thing about frosting. I don't like a lot of yes. frosting. Uh huh. <laughs> and my my philosophy the the more frosting the better. I think yeah, alternatively yeah, yeah, yeah. I could have gone for just the regular chocolate frosting. Like a thin layer yeah. of chocolate frosting is okay. And and then this one is almost, you know, knitting and crochet appropriate. Pick a sweater and I show yeah. sweaters on <laughs> animals. Uh-huh. I, I went for the puppy. Have to go for the puppy. So oh, cute. I had to pick the 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 pony with the fair isle sweater. <laughs> It's a big sweater that is much bigger than a human sweater. Uh, maybe. It, it must be. <laughs> but it's are a pony. Still pretty big. It's not They're like, big around. It's not like, 
They're big okay. around. Okay, it's like barrel shaped. Yeah. Still, yeah. I still had to pick the, the puppy and the barrel. little burnt orange sweater and the leaves. He looks so. I do like, like the autumnal. the little the little sweater on the snake <laughs> with the funny. arms. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's like finger puppet sized well actually yeah. i don't know how big that snake is maybe the snake is really big <laughs> i hope it's not that big yeah and the the kitty's pretty cute too yeah um those are oh and then there was that pokemon question yeah pick a pokemon right. and I, when i think about pokemon i just think because we didn't do really do like we didn't watch pokemon we didn't play pokemon uh-huh. games or do the cards but uh-huh. we cut out the pokemon thingies on the back of a lunchable box <laughs> Do you, know, do you remember? Yeah, I do. <laughs> but I, I picked the, the one more. that looks like a, hor- a fire horse. Oh, I just picked the pink blob. No, that is that? Jigglypuff. Oh, I, I think that's know. Jigglypuff. I know this because you can play Jigglypuff on Super Smash Brothers. I oh. think she sings. It sings. He sings. I don't know. And then puts you to sleep. Oh. Yeah. And how do you eat your Oreo? Um, I, I don't really like Oreos. Ah, that's a cookie that you don't like then? Oh, fine. Yeah, but you don't bake. <laughs> Maybe if you like homemade baked an Oreo. <laughs> but, I, but I said Dunkin' Chomp because if I were to eat it, I'd probably prefer yeah. to dunk it. Yeah. I had a hard time picking the dad. Wait, you didn't say how you ate your Oreo. Oh, I Dunkin' Chomp. Chomp. Oh, also. Chomp. Chomp. Um, I picked, I picked, I picked uh, Mufasa. Hmm. I, well, I picked... The Bill Cosby one, just because it's the character I'm picking. I'm not picking Bill Cosby. <laughs> okay, I I, don't, I didn't know the first two dads. Uh, one is the uh, Friday night Friday night lights. Uh-huh. Uh And then the other one, I have no idea what uh, what that's from. It's from mm-hmm. Fox, something on Fox. All right. Well, I don't know. So I don't yeah, know. I didn't pick either of those two because I didn't. <laughs> Homer Simpson. Right. So that's our best because I like that one. <laughs> uh, so as you say, on to our fiber content. Yes. Uh, what do you have for whips? So I'm still working on my pleated cardigan by Cat Golden. <laughs> and so I don't know. Oh, last time I finished making the sleeves and I was having to... Uh, I was about to block them before sewing them on. <laughs> and I did it. I, I blocked them and then I sewed one on and it was just all wrong. <laughs> and the problem was that the seam what is what is that called? Where it attaches um to the shoulder? To the shoulder, yeah, that was too far down my arm rather than right. Oh, on the, top the armhole, of... where the armhole is. Yeah. It 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 went below it wasn't right on top of my shoulder it went mm-hmm. it dropped down it's like it's a that, drop shoulder yeah and because it's got the it's kind of like a poofy sleeve it's got the pleats right right there it mm-hmm. kind of needs to be right on top of your shoulder so it looked stupid and because there's so much extra material with that pleat it's really heavy as well so it dropped and then it was kind of like pulling the weight extra weight <laughs> was pulling it down even more and so I had a video consultation with you, so you already know this, <laughs> um, <laughs> about what I should do. Um, and kind of thought about, like, because, you know, the way it's constructed, there's, they can't really redo the body, the actual armhole bit, without literally ripping the whole thing out. Um, I thought about, like, folding material in, but then it would just be super bulky at the shoulder. So I ripped out one of the arms, and I'm trying to just make it again without the pleat, just as like a regular looking sleeve with my abundance of garment making knowledge. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and during my video consultation with you, you sketched me the pick the shape of what <laughs> the sleeve should look like. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing right now. Um, oh. I've not gotten very far. I I like um, it was sort of you know trying to do that top bit the top part mm-hmm. of the sleeve with the mm-hmm. how would you the curve the curve and it wasn't quite right so i undid it a bit and and making the 
size a bit more gradual. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just sort of making up as I go along. And it's easy enough that I don't think I really need to make notes. I think I can just look at it. And once I figure out the one that I want to do, I can look at it and then write notes from there to do the second uh-huh. one. Because it's, it's um, was it half double crochets? Uh, it's it double crochets. Double crochets. Yeah. Oh, so they're it's, easy, the, it's they're pretty easy to read. You can count them pretty easy. Yeah, they're easy to count, and because it's that paired one, they like they're very distinctive V's. Uh huh. So they're really they're, there's a little bit of space in between them, so they're easy to see and stuff. Yeah. Um. So that is what a how where I am there. Um, not that far along. I'm pretty much less far than I was the last time we spoke. Uh. <laughs> Poor and, baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, let, I, I mentioned before I was in Rome this weekend, so I, I've really not worked on it at all, really, because I didn't want to bring it with me because it's not really a good project to work on um, when I can't just sort of concentrate. Um, but I'm also hoping to submit this garment to Catherine of Craft for Noon Treats Sweater Cal, specifically Crochet Along. But I think that runs until the end of August. So I, st- I still have time. I still have like two mm-hmm. months. Uh, the second thing I'm working on is not that far along, but it's a scarf. So I went out specifically yarn shopping to try to find something to make a shawl based off uh, a pattern by Rosina. <laughs> and I couldn't find anything that I liked. So... But I did pick up this at John Lewis because they're having like a massive clearance of the whole store. But there was some yarn on sale, and it's a uh, Rico yarns, uh, like a big ombre cake. Mm. Yeah, the so one that's it, as big as your face. Yeah, it's two hundred grams. I couldn't tell the weight. It doesn't have the well. It's got the um the gauge, but I c- can't. I don't know enough to just look at that and be like, oh, that's a DK yarn. Um, it doesn't have a weight descript- like classification. No, it has a four on it. I don't know if that, that probably means so something. So is that like, is that like a worsted or an Aaron? I, th- I think. I think it's meant to be DK. I looked it up afterwards, oh. but oh. they. they I thought I think they also. Were... Oh no, I'm. Okay, go ahead. They also sell it in a fingering way, I think. Mm-hmm. But this one's not the thing. Wait, but because it's unply, it's unplied. It's four strands. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. When it was sitting in its cake, I really couldn't tell. Like, cause I couldn't, mm-hmm. I couldn't pull you out pull the strand because all I can see is tiny little strands all over the place. So mm-hmm. I couldn't tell how many of those strands made up. So it's like one, two. There's like two strands, and in- there's four, four strands that make up the yarn. It's completely unplied. And I think that's how they get the ombre effect. So oh, yeah. I've just gotten to a color change. So before, all four were this the darkest color. And now mm-hmm. it's three of the darkest plus one of the next color. And so it's wait, just... what, what, are you, what are you doing with that? So I'm making a scarf. Uh, just of my own design. Something simple, relatively. It's, I guess it's sort of like Fila Crochet, but it's just triangles. Mm, um, yeah, so solid that's triangles pretty. and then the uh, like mesh triangles. They but look I've almost done... like Star of David's, sort of. Uh, Never mind. Or or t- uh, those tess- t- tessellated something or other. Um. Never mind. <laughs> they <they're... laughs> they look nice. Um. But it's just gonna be a re- regular rectangle scarf. Um. But I'm doing the solid bits of rec- uh, sorry of triangles as a linked double crochet just to make it more solid. Because mm-hmm. when you just do the double crochet, there's obviously still quite a bit of space, especially because I'm not crocheting it particularly tightly. But yeah, so I'm not I'm not very far. I also like it's not difficult the pattern, but I I just I keep missing something and then not realizing until I've basically gone two rows back and then having to rip it out. and So I worked on it a little bit on the plane, but I think I ended up ripping out everything that I worked on on the plane because mm. I just kept going back and forth. <laughs> I was tired. Oh. <laughs> but those are the only whips I have. 
Well, they have a new one, so that's yeah, good. Yeah, one of them is new. Um, I'm still working on my sock arms. I didn't get very far because um, I was a little preoccupied about and um, la- the last couple weeks. And so I was n- knitting away on it, and I realized, and I had gotten to the waist shaping, which was where I was last time we recorded, and I realized I was only doing waist shaping on one side. I wasn't doing waist <laughs> shaping on the other side. I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> so I had to tear it all out to, yeah, so um, so I didn't really get very far. In fact, let's see. I am... Yep, I'm, I mean, see see the part that I wound back onto the ball? Mm-hmm. It's I haven't even gotten, gotten through that part were. yet. Yeah, so I am I am behind where I was last time. <laughs> so that was a knit fail. I have a second uh, whip that ju- I just started yesterday. And this is the sock yarn that I bought at the Elegant U with Caroline of... Mm-hmm. Um, my name is, and she she bought the same yarn in like a peachy pink color, and I got was it the one kit? in the green. Um, I put the link on the thing on on our notes, so you, I don't have the the ball band. But it wasn't it wasn't the wool and the gang sock kit. Yeah, it is. It's a, oh. it's a wool and the gang kind of magic sock. So it's supposed to look like leopard spots, and you have to kind of fiddle around with the the gauge until you get the gauge right, like. It gives you a few stripes to the fiddle. You know, it's, it's like one stripe is supposed to be an exact round, and I couldn't get it. It was either just a little bit too much or just a little bit not enough, and uh-huh. I just it's like oh, so I was just like screw it. So the the first part part of it does kind of look like leopard spots. Uh-huh. Oops, I'm not holding it the right. Place. Yeah, you see that? Yeah, it does. And then as you get <laughs> further, along, <laughs> it devolves. It, yeah, it doesn't look like leopard spots anymore. So you know what? It looks kind of like tie dye. So that's I'm gonna go with that. Mm. It's a tie dye sock. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe you'll have like the leopard spots at the beginning, and then it'll go all crazy in the middle, and then rematch around at the end, and you have another leopard spot at the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you look at the picture in the ball band, it's like leopard spot throughout. Yeah. So I don't know, but this is this is just the leg. I'm supposed to do something for the heel now, and I didn't have the instructions with me when I was in the car today, so that's where I ended. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I kept going on and on because I was like, I want to see how the spots are progressing, and then <laughs> and then the more I knit, Not the well. less they were progressing. <laughs> what, what's the word for everything goes basically back to chaos? Entropy. Entropy. Oh. Okay. That. <laughs> But yeah, I had I tried different couple of different size. So right now, this, these are size ones. Is that very small? Yeah, that's pretty small. The next the next size smaller is size zeros. Uh huh. Um, in the standard, but then there's like the zero zeros in the. Zero so did you zero have zeros. to go that small just to get the the stripey thingy right? Yeah, and it, it wasn't like it was just two stitches off. That was as close as I could get it. So what happens if you have a really fat leg? I don't know. I mean, it's not very it's not a very tall sock, so it's just around your ankles anyway. It's not like What if you have a really fat foot? <sighs> big foot. What if you just have a big foot? I don't know. Then you, you, you just can, wouldn't you can, be you able can to gift make it, it to with somebody you. else. Mm. So I, I assume it doesn't I mean, come in like different sizes. The kit. No, it's just one size it's just uh, it's kind of magic because your gauge has to be exactly spot on if it's not spot on it's gonna not look right so okay. does yeah. that not so suggest that the sock is only one size what's that is that not you can make i think you can make it longer though but but like but the, 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 <laughs> do you know what i mean though <laughs> like obviously well, like yeah. socks can fit more than one size foot like when you buy socks uh-huh. it, it, it's a uh-huh. range of foot sizes but yeah, well, I was intrigued by the packaging. I was, you know, mm, yeah, I yeah, totally yeah. fell for it. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know who's going to be able to fit these socks. We'll see. Um, and I, this is like usually when I make socks, I just go blah 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 blah, and I knit them, and then I don't. Even you go like anything. what? <laughs> blah blah blah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this time it's like I'm actually following 
the pattern. Mm-hmm. So those are the only two uh, whips that I've been working on the last couple weeks. Um, do you have any FOs? No. Okay, I have one FO, two FOs, and and then this the another FO, the FO that I talked about last time, the socks, the time traveler socks. Yeah. Somebody on Instagram, I I you know I should have looked. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> asked me do you like uh, a one by one rib or a two, two by. by two rib or yeah. whatever and I said I usually like a two by two rib but then I looked at the sock and <laughs> one foot had a one by one rib and the other sock had a two by two rib I don't know what the hell happened <laughs> so they really are fraternal they're not even fraternal twin socks they're just siblings uh yeah so um yeah are you just keeping them like that yeah i'm gonna keep i'm there for me so it's fine (laughs) i don't care (laughs) (laughs) i couldn't believe that i mean i can't believe i went through the whole thing and i took pictures i blocked it and everything and then and then you know (laughs) just didn't notice didn't even notice until somebody asked me which one I like better. I'm like, oh, crap. I didn't even stick with one. Both, apparently. So much that I got to do them both. <laughs> so um, so my first F.O. is the dish towels that, that I didn't even bring upstairs. <laughs> it's just the dish towel, whatever. Uh, but the second, um, that you know, that's not a big deal. It's, it's just the three color slip stitch. It, it came out. I, I like the way the colors work with each other, so it mm-hmm. came out really cool. But I finished my fiddlehead mittens for Evelyn. Oh, nice. Um, and here's the lining. Nice. Is green. So that that um, according to your uh, chart is a three pointer. Uh huh. But Ooh. since I only worked on just a little bit of the the top of one mitten and the lining, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give myself a point for the color work. Oh, I was gonna say that was <laughs> complexity, but yeah. <laughs> um, I do I do really like the the color work with the. That's just one yarn, right? That just the two yarns changes. Col- no, but like the oh, the color changing is one yarn. Yeah, the color it's, it's one of those z- zebra ball like ones. It's one of these. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with it. Is there anything else? Oh, that was it. Those are my two whips. Is just the dish towels and the mitts. Mm. And so you still have to make those what's... fiddlehead mittens for yourself. You still have the yarn to make it for yourself, right? Yes, I do. I have to make them for myself too. But I think I'm gonna put put the fiddlehead pattern away for a little bit. Yeah. Before I make one for myself. <laughs> you are like the queen of repeating patterns. I am. Like, the last couple of years, I have been. I don't know. You get kind of like, I don't know. I I I like. I get I get a pattern what I really like, and then I was like, I want to do this in a different color. <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. So they're like six, you know, success stories. Yeah. So you don't have any FOS. No, I don't. But there's some people who've been posting FOS into the Ravelry group for the Cal Cal, which has been good, and I feel that bad because I've been not that active but i've today i went through and and had a look at some of them and in the chat and everything and for anyone who doesn't know we're running a knit along crochet along which is the cal cal uh, until august 31st and basically you can submit whatever you want as long as it's crocheted (laughs) or knit and basically you're uh submitting it towards team if i sit i knit or team crochet all day and then we've got a point mm-hmm. system, and that's on Ravelry as well, on our group. Uh, and depending on how big of a project it is, you earn a certain amount of points for your team. Yep. It looks like Team Crochet is swimmingly going swimmingly along. Yeah. Well, there, I did notice a, a couple of uh, knitting projects that showed up mm-hmm. that aren't quite done yet, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In the chatter. So they look nice. Very, very nice. So, yep, hopefully um, the knitters can at least tie with the crocheters. 
Yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe they're just some knitters who are lurking, and then all, at the last second they'll all just come out of the woodwork and be like, bam, bam, ten points, ten points, sweater, sweater, in the middle of the summer. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how it works? <laughs> I <Maybe>. don't know. <laughs> Oh, wait, how long does our, our new long go for? Until the end of August. August 31st. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Uh, you were going on, you went on um, this, the yarn that you're working with right now. It was, mm-hmm. was there a big sale? Uh, you said? Oh, I mean, it was it was just John, at John Lewis. There was like a big clearance. Like, I think their annual sale. I almost bought a pillow. I did. Oh. I see. Well, I have something for Yarny Bits and Bobs. Go for it. Go for Yarny Bits and Bobs. Classically Yarns is going out of business. Who, and which which are Classically Yarns? The... You know the yarn that I made your um, Après Surf hoodie? That was a Classically Yarn. Uh, do they I do the alpaca socks as well? Alpaca socks are also... I made my um, cobbled, cobbled street cow with um, that. Classically, and what else have you used lately? But the whole the whole yarn company is going away, and they they have they also have a yarn store, and that's going away too. So the last few weeks, um, my friends and I have been mostly me and Paula have been going to Hub Mills the store to buy yarn so we've been kind of going crazy <laughs> buying all this i think i spent about six hundred dollars on yarn oh my week. word <laughs> it's not just yarn there's like a little doodads and needles i mean everything was 50 percent off the last time we were there and it's so sad because like they were never gonna be able to get this yarn again <sighs> i also bought yar- yarn for prizes uh-huh. so there's that <laughs> um, I met Julia Farwell Clay. She's a designer, and she's she's um written in con- partnered with Classic Elite Yarns, uh, a pattern book. I so see. I met her. She's actually one of um, Paula's friends or acquaintances, mm-hmm. and she introduced me to her. And she signed a book for me. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I bought an extra book, so that might be a prize as well. But basically, all that yarn is going away. Um, who so knows? you bought the whole shop, right? Mm, no, well, their whole warehouse. I mean, they have a huge warehouse. That's all. Oh, not not just yarns. Um, so what did you I buy bought, for me? I bought. Um, <laughs> I mean, you can shop in my stash when you come home. But they all their shop their their pattern samples were uh-huh. on sale too. So I bought some what a do couple you sweaters. Care pattern samples for. You know, for their photo photo shoots. But what do you need them for? Oh, to give away to people for Christmas gifts. (laughs) I made this (laughs) myself. (laughs) You can't even buy the yarn for that price, and it's hand knit. (laughs) So I bought a couple, a couple things for your cousins, and something for my sister, something for your sister. Um, I didn't get anything for you. Except, well, yeah. So anyway, so yeah, that's that's where my six hundred dollars went to. A lot of the samples, and I even bought myself a a mannequin. Nice. Yeah. So it was like it was very bittersweet. It was very sad that they're going away, but at the mm-hmm. same time, I'm happy that I got some good deals. <laughs> so I've I've put most of the yarn that I I, I bought on the on my Ravelry, you know, in my stash already. But they, so, but they're still in bags over here in my studio. Yeah. <laughs> so that was that was my yarny, yarny bit and bob. Mm. Yeah, go, going to Hub Mills three to, three times in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> more, more yarn, more yarn. I'm sure um, they're probably gonna, I don't know, sell the lot the the rest of whatever to Webs or something, and they'll have like closeouts and stuff like that. Mm, mm-hmm. And actually, I have yeah. a mommypedia for you. You do? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I could probably figure it out myself, but... Um, so, if you were to use a different weight of yarn for a pattern than what the pattern calls for, mm-hmm. 
What does that mean for how much yarn you need to get? <laughs> well, I mean, if you're going to be using... Well, it depends on if it's something, a garment that's fitted or if it's a scarf or a shawl. Well, just like generally speaking, like if if you're going to use a thinner yarn, say... Then you would need more yarn, you more yardage. More, more yardage. But then generally speaking the same weight of skein would have more yardage anyway. Yeah. Okay. But you would do Okay, that that, that starts to get too Well, the weight the weight may be less, but you would need more yardage. It, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then the then opposite for if you opposite were going for if you, yeah. I'm trying to think why I originally thought this question. I think because I was thinking of doing a pattern with a different weight. So just 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 like a shawl or something, I think. Nothing like complicated. Oh. And I can't even remember what it was. Yeah, it was just a quick question. Yeah, that's just that's like a math problem. You just have to calculate you can figure it out like how much mm -hmm. um if you have the gauge and everything, you can figure it out. I would need yeah. a calculator. I can't do all that stuff in my head. Mm -hmm. Or I ask your father to calculate it for me. <laughs> Because he's Mr. Calculator Head. Uh, um, so we don't have a mailbag today, but just so that everybody remembers, you can email us at kcacypodcast at gmail.com and submit something for the mailbag. Uh, just anything, really. Uh, tell us what you're working on. Um, tell us about some new yarn you bought. Um so just email us with an audio clip. We like audio clips because we're an audio podcast, obviously. But if you want to just send us a regular email, we can read it out as well. Because uh, we'd like to hear from you. So please somebody submit something to the mailbag for next episode. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please, please, please. Do you have any favorite things this time? No. I have no favorite things. Okay, no way. I'll say my favorite thing about Rome, my trip to Rome, was probably the Pantheon. Why? I just... I, I, the, the Colosseum is big and it's cool, but I think when you get inside, it, it's not as... It's not... It doesn't seem as impressive to me. I think because there's, there's a, a lot... Yeah, well, it's not just that it's a ruin. I, I like ruins, but I think because there's a lot more brick than mm -hmm. you think there's going to be. And it just aesthetically, the way it looks, it doesn't look as romantic as some like ruins here, where it's all stone. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Whereas... The, the Pantheon, it, it's, I mean, it's completely different because it's not a room and it's still used as a church and it's completely intact, but it's nearly as old as the Colosseum. Um, mm. which oh, is I didn't very, know that. Yeah, which is impressive. Um, I, I mean, I don't know how old which parts are, but and it's still the world's largest unsupported or unreinforced concrete dome, which I think just means there's no metal like inside the concrete to support the dome um mm -hmm. and it's got the oculus in it so there's a big hole in the middle and it's just very impressive and i posted on instagram because my travel companions are not art history nerds the way i am so they literally were going to just storm through the piazza <laughs> on their way to the trevi fountain i was like excuse me stop and admi <laughs> admire this <laughs> have had you been there before yeah i went with high school uh-huh um but definitely, like, you know, my, my art history knowledge from either probably both high school and a little bit of college. I'm trying to think if I studied much from that time period. Some of it's still stuck, like walking around. Mm -hmm. There was Trajan's Column, which is a big column with, like, a, like relief sculpture 
around it in a big spiral and it is very impressive but as we were walking by that i'm like ah uh, i think i recognize that and then <laughs> the name came to me and uh-huh. there was a statue at the vatican that i sort of spotted and i was like ah i recognize that too and then by the time <laughs> i got to it and there was literally a crowd around them just tr- taking pictures like over people and i was like okay it must be a stop on the audio guide because <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, that's so cool that you can just like take a weekend and just hop over to to Rome or it was wherever. more than a weekend, but yeah. What four days? Four days. Four days it ended up. Days? I ended up taking four days because I I was gonna work a half day on Monday, but I I forget things and I forgot my residence permit, and so I didn't get home until much later than anticipated. <laughs> uh oh. So that was that was my favorite thing for the week, I suppose. <laughs> oh. Well, that's good. I I didn't think of any favorite things, um, but I am very happy that at least most of my children will be home um, this week or later on this week. You you will be the only one that's not home. Mm. So, three quarters of the children who are mostly not children anymore. Yeah, but yeah, I do get to see you next month, so that's good. Uh huh. But do you have something for nerdtastic? I do. We saw Jurassic World two. <laughs> was it? Was it the official name Fallen Kingdom or something? Like yeah, that? that sounds right. It's a very silly movie. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one thought it wasn't going to be. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of plot holes. It didn't really make a whole lot of sense. But you know, whatever. You get to see dinosaurs running around and chasing after people. But um. The movie didn't take place at the island. I mean, it did take place in the island, but it was it was not all in the island. They ended up being elsewhere. So that was. Uh, is this you crazy. trying to avoid spoilers? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not very good at that. And plus, we we literally saw it like the day after we recorded last time. Or something. So it's like it's been two weeks, and I could barely remember. It. And we we we've seen um we keep watching things on on demand, you know. So I've been watching stuff with with Madeline. But we did, we did see Coco on demand. I was like, good. Um, yeah, I liked it. It was meant to be really good. It was it was really good. It was I actually cried. <laughs> mm-hmm. and it was very sweet. Then I'll definitely cry. Hey, yeah, probably like you'll probably cry. So it was, it was just amazing. Like you know what what they do with the the animation. It's just sometimes it's like it's like I can't believe they use a computer. I mean it's it's like it looks like they they took dolls and you know made the dolls move around. You know it looks like you can just touch it, but mm-hmm. it's just it's all computer animated. So that's yeah. pretty cool. I think that's that's just pretty amazing. Looks like we're going to have a short episode this time around. That's right. Um, it's summer. Yes. Um, it's summer. Which I suppose for you should mean that you actually get more crafting done, right? Or less crafting. Mm. Um, Less because I don't know. Actually, I guess it depends on what's going on. But this year, this summer anyway, um, there's... Already a lot of running around. Madeline is going to be a senior in high school coming this fall. And so we're looking at colleges and um, all that fun stuff. So I am not looking forward to sending my last one to college. But I am looking forward to it all being over with. And I don't have to worry about it anymore. (laughs) um, If that makes any sense. Yeah. Uh, She is... um, you know, for the baby of the family, she has a pretty good head on her shoulders. I mean, she she's pretty level-headed and stuff. So, mm-hmm. um, oh, she started working. She's a lifeguard. And, I mean, yeah, she's, she's the only one of that. us to work during high school. During high school, yes. So, yes. Um, or officially. You, you and Emily did a lot of babysitting. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. So, you know, there's just running around for that. Um, we have family gathering tomorrow. For the holiday. So yeah. I mean I haven't been spending that much time in front of my sewing machine. I was Mm. hoping I could get more sewing in. As far as shop talk. There isn't a whole lot of shop talk. But we can 
put up a few pictures of some of the bags I've worked on the last couple of weeks. Yeah, um, what have you the, worked on? The um, the fabrics that I bought in Pennsylvania, the ones with the squirrels and the sheep and the travel icons, I made those into bags. And I've decided, um, you know, those tea towels I got in Scotland, I was hoarding one of them. For yourself or? For myself. And I decided, you know what? I'm going back to Scotland in August, so I'm just going to make this into a bag wow. <laughs> to sell. And if I want which, one, which I of the tea towels? Um, uh, the one with the the one with the, the armadillo. Armad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of all the buildings to talk about on it, the one that I don't really know. Oh, <laughs> like... uh, well, I figured I could always buy another one when I go in August. What if there are no more? I'm sure there'll be other things. <laughs> so like, I already, like the plaid sheep, those are gone. I've already finished. I think I ended up only getting one of those, right? I can't remember. Anyway, so yeah, I've been trying to make bags, but, you know, being your, your sister's chauffeur is kind of eating into my sewing time. Yeah. My sewing and my knitting time because she does not have a license. Mm-hmm. So I have to drive her to and from work. Righty. Well, is that us then? I guess so. You get to do the spiel. Spiel. Yes. Uh, You can find our show notes for this episode and every episode, or our contact form to send us a message, on our website, which is kcacypodcast.wordpress.com, and our Instagram is kcacypodcast. Uh, My personal Instagram is Allison here, and my mom's is upstate underscore viv. Um, And make sure to like, comment, subscribe on iTunes or YouTube or wherever else you get your podcasts from and join our Ravelry group. Just search Keep Calm and Carry On Podcast in the Groups tab so that you can post your FOs and maybe win a prize for the Cow Cow. And I expect absolutely everybody that listens to us, obviously, to post something there because (laughs) I'm sure you finished something over the summer (laughs) that you can submit. And I will take pity on the knitters, especially knitters. <laughs> you knitters <laughs> listening who are lurking and not submitting things. The knitters need help. They need help. <laughs> we always need help. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you for listening. And remember to keep calm and carry on. <laughs>